Okay, so today we're going to be looking at extracting iron using a blast furnace. Now, yes, you could look up this on YouTube, but it's much better to hear it from Mr. Shapley himself. So there are three raw materials we need to add to the blast furnace. That's hematite, coke, and limestone. The hematite is an iron ore, which is a substance that contains enough iron to make it worth extracting. Okay, in this case, it is iron three oxide. Okay. Uh, iron three oxide is the deep brown red color. Uh, it is the same compound found on the surface of Mars, hence the color. Coke is an impure form of carbon. And limestone contains calcium carbonate, which we will come to later. Right. Now, iron is below carbon in the reactivity series, therefore it is less reactive than carbon and can be displaced from its compound, the iron three oxide. Uh, this process is a lot cheaper than using electrolysis, however still requires high temperatures to overcome the activation energy of the reaction. So, first the coke reacts with the hot air that is pumped in the bottom to form carbon dioxide. So hot air comes in here. Okay. Uh, the carbon reacts with oxygen to make carbon dioxide. Now this reaction is very exothermic. Okay. Uh, so it releases a lot of heat energy and allows the reduction of iron oxide to take place, which we'll see next. Now, uh, note how the temperature varies inside the blast furnace. Okay, about 1,800 degrees at the bottom and gradually gets uh, cooler as we get to the top, if we can call it cooler. There we go, about 400 degrees. The melting point of iron is 1,538 degrees. Uh, now, you don't need to know these temperatures off by heart. At very high temperatures, the carbon dioxide is reduced by more coke to form carbon, mono um, carbon monoxide. Yeah, I was going to, that's, that's right, that's correct. Mr. Shepler, you were right. Okay, another reducing agent. So CO2 plus carbon gives two carbon monoxide. And that there is a reducing agent. The carbon monoxide is going to reduce the iron three oxide to form iron. Now, this is an important reaction. Okay, so the iron three oxide reacts with carbon monoxide to produce iron. That's what we're looking for. And carbon dioxide. Now, unfortunately, okay, unfortunately for you, you will have to learn all the reactions involved in this process. I don't, you do. Many students make the mistake of writing iron two. They put a two there because they see the two there. Shame on them. Iron is not diatomic. It means uh, you would lose two marks in the test. One for incorrect formula. Uh, iron is monoatomic. And another for incorrect balancing. Let me put three, two, three. Okay. In hotter parts of the blast furnace, uh, that's lower down, the iron three oxide is reduced to iron by carbon itself, giving off the toxic gas carbon monoxide. So your iron three oxide plus carbon gives iron plus carbon monoxide. Now, look at you, the balancing is quite straightforward. It's exactly the same as the one above. The carbon monoxide, that's not a problem. Okay? Hot gases tend to rise, therefore the carbon monoxide will travel up through the blast furnace okay, and react with more iron oxide to make iron and carbon dioxide. Okay? The carbon dioxide is a waste gas, it leaves the blast furnace here at the top. Okay? While well, the product of the molten iron is tapped off here at the bottom. Iron, that's molten iron, so Fe, that's supposed to be an E, liquid. Okay. So, let's just put iron under there. Right, so the next step is to remove the impurities that were present in the original uh, iron ore, the hematite. Who comes up with these names? Anyway, um, an impurity such as sulfur reacts with the hot air to form sulfur dioxide. Okay, now sulfur dioxide is a gas at room temperature, so it would also leave the blast furnace along with the carbon dioxide. Not a problem. Okay. Uh, the main impurity in hematite, however, is silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide, uh, also known as sand or quartz. Plenty of that here in Qatar. Uh, if the sand though wasn't removed, the iron would be too brittle for use. So that's why the limestone is added. Limestone undergoes thermal decomposition at high temperatures. Okay, uh, from the heat in the blast furnace, it breaks down to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, this is known as a thermal 
decomposition. I was about to make a mistake, but Mr. Shepley doesn't make mistakes. Okay, that's one reactant breaking down using heat to make two or more products. That is thermal decomposition. Now, why? Well, the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate makes calcium oxide. Right? Now, metal oxides are basic oxides, non-metal oxides are acidic. Calcium oxide is a basic oxide, which reacts with the acidic oxide, silicon dioxide. Okay? So, plus calcium oxide, that comes here, and that produces calcium silicate. It's liquid, it's ionic, and it's also known as slag. This reaction here, it's not going to be able to fit, but that is a neutralization reaction. Okay, this reaction here is a neutralization reaction. Uh, it's easy to remember. Okay, just add all the atoms together in the silicon dioxide with the calcium oxide to get your calcium silicate. Okay, uh, the calcium silicate is less dense than the iron, so it floats on top of it, and it can easily, easily be removed here. Calcium silicate.